make it happen. Make it happen. There we are. It is time to delve into the world of the Mimic. We're going to be dealing with Mimics today. We're going to try and make a Mimic. You have no idea how terrified I am. The idea of making a door Mimic is just terrifying. But we're still going to give it a go because... You know, I do things live stream, and no matter how terrifying it is, and how difficult it might seem, I will still try to do it. So that is what's happening today. And yes, I do apologize for not advertising that I was going to do this, because I am aware that, like most things, people would like to know when I'm doing this sort of stuff. But I just couldn't do it, unfortunately. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today... I'm going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons while we make a Mimic. And we're not just going to make a normal Mimic, we're actually going to make a Door Mimic. And as it happens, I was looking around the internet trying to find something. Does somebody actually print a miniature that's a Door Mimic? And I found something. But unfortunately, it looks incredibly expensive and not something that I can manage to purchase. And so I thought we would have a go at making something like this. I'm not sure how easy or difficult that will be, but, um, I, and truthfully, I don't honestly think that my Mimic will come out looking like anything like this, but it should come out looking like something. So that is the, uh, the plan for today. We are going to be making a door Mimic. And uh, I've, I've been, been talking, talking about, about making the Mimics for a long time. But... As, As it happens, it is time, time to uh, actually get down and make it happen. I mean, uh, if you talk about something, eventually you've got to just cough up the goods and, and do it. So by all means, chat away to me while we're doing this. And uh, I'm just heating up the hot glue gun. I'm going to go through all of the materials. Now, I, I've, you know I'm a little worried when I don't include all of my materials and tools down in the description. Because although I do have tools that are, and materials that I will be using today, I haven't included everything. What I have is my, just, my desk is just covered with everything I could possibly find, just in case I thought I might need it. So uh, we're going to make two mimics. We're going to make a large size mimic, and I realise that there's nothing in the Monster Manual for Dungeons & Dragons 5e for that, but we're still going to do it. And we're going to make a medium size mimic uh, that's two doors. And that's why I've got the miniatures to sort of give me some scale, a large miniature around the medium sized miniature to scale up. So that is the plan, and I will go through the materials and I will chat to you while you post your questions, or just give me a hard time when I botch things up if possible. Um, with that, uh, letter Z. Oh geez, there's a lot of uh, reverb. Oh, is there reverb in this? Sounds like you're preparing to speak three times. It's possible that, oh, I know what it is. I apologize. I know what's happened. It's done this to me a couple of times. What happens is the webcam tries to pick up the audio as well. So um, I wish it would stop doing that. I don't know why it is. It should be eliminated now. I'm just looking through to make sure that it's not happening. Usually I test it beforehand. And in this case, it's probably uh, created a whole lot of nasty noises to you. Uh, look, it should be gone. If it's not gone, there we go, it's gone. Good, all right. Okay, so let's get on with this. So I have a, a medium-sized base. I have a large-sized base. Got that. I've got a whole bunch of, um, what is it, uh, ice block sticks. I think I'm going to use the ice block sticks because it requires less work on my part. No more echo from uh, Cypher. Great. And uh, welcome, uh, Cypher Strafe. I'm glad you can make it. Um, I've also got a lot of these uh, matchsticks. I don't know if I want to use the matchsticks, but I got them anyway. Okay. Um, I've got beads. I've got beads, lots of beads, and I've also got my own little balls that I made up from Milliput. Uh, that I, you know, when I ran out of sort of time, it got too hot, and so I've got a whole lot of little round things, which I think I can use as eyes. And I've got different sizes, sized ones, so that could be quite helpful. So I've got all that. I've also got a, a little needle file for filing off the wood as I go, because I didn't bring any sandpaper, and I'm going to use a file instead. 
I've got some toothpicks because I figure that's going to be my teeth. I've got uh, a pair of uh, long nose Stanley pliers because I figure I'm going to have to bend some wire into a shape of some kind for the, the knocker. Well, I'm going to try and make the knocker. If I, I can't make the knocker, then I can't make the knocker. If I can't make it out of wire, I'll make it out of something else. I've also got, uh, obviously, my hot glue gun, which is heating up right now. I've got a Stanley knife. This is heavy duty. This is the classic. This is for cutting through my wood, uh, which I can just imagine is going to be quite hard to do. I've got a bit of uh, putty, just to, well this is just blue tag really, just to hold things in place because I'm sure I'm going to have to do that. I've got my green stuff just in case I decide to use some green stuff, that'll make it a bit more expensive to make unfortunately. Um, I do have a pair of scissors because I'm going to be cutting up cardboard I suspect at some point, um, although I'm going to try to use the craft knife if I can. I've got spare glue sticks. I have a ruler for measuring, which we're probably going to use very shortly. I have, did I say I had the wire? Yeah. I've got my uh, crafting tools because I might use some milli putt. Um, and I did bring my milli putt. I didn't just bring the green stuff. There's milli putt as well. Oh, that, that went over there. And then I also brought my Citadel drill just in case I decided to drill some holes to make things sort of work. Um, so, as you can see, I am completely panicking about this project. So by all means, pump up my ego and make me feel better about it. Anyway, let us figure out what we're doing here. I think using these is a better idea. So I'm going to break this off. I'm going to dump that over there. I'm going to keep a few of them. What I noticed about this is these things seem to slide into the slot on this small one really easily. And so I'm figuring I can get like two of these side by side glued together and it'll be easier to secure make it a lot easier to secure heaps more so that is that is certainly what i think is a decent plan so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, cut off straight these bits of uh, ice cream stick and we're also going to make a large one. Oh, it's a bit bent oh, let's get a straight one are they all bent no uh what's that um uh Lila, Lila, Lila Z. Well, most of the stuff you pump out is on par with official stuff. So, well, that's good. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm not trying to be official, but um, I'm certainly just trying to be reasonable. Let's have a go at this anyway. This would have been a video on making the chest mimic, in the treasure chest mimic, but I uh, had a look at it and I thought, well, actually, I need a little bit more time to figure that out. Oh. Did I, should I have brought myself a saw, a chainsaw? Cutting through these is just going to be just awful. I wonder if I can cut it off with a pair of scissors. Yeah, yeah, I know you're you're laughing because of the size of the scissors. Uh, they went through. Oh, okay. So mark it and then cut it. Okay. So slight slight tip: mark it with a knife, then cut it with the scissors. Mark it with a knife, cut it with the scissors. Very good. Okay, so we keep going, and obviously the door doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, if anything, I'm probably going to make sure that the eyes are slightly skew. That is that is the intention. Is if I make them slightly skew, then it kind of looks more like, and probably more than one eye. I think the idea of giving it three eyes, I like the one on the top that you can see there. More than one eye just seems like an awesome idea. So we're going to just cut through this thing and my scissors are going to survive uh, yeah okay all right we've got that done okay so i need to decide on how tall this thing is going to be so i think this is my my standard we're going to go with uh, now i do things in metric not imperial so you, you can see that it's both imperial and metric so this miniature is about four centimeters or 40 millimeters high which i would say is a approximately uh, that is one inch just over one inch and a half so that's divided into a four eight so that's uh, five eight so one inch and five eighths high in inches and I've given you how's it going Trevor Kerr welcome to the party um, okay sorry I know how long it needs to be Plus I want to add a little bit more 
for the depth on this particular uh, miniature base. So we'll just figure out what that is, because that is going to be kind of helpful. Uh, two, three mil, about three mil. Okay. So forty-three millimeters, which is going to be about. Oh, my eyes are so bad. Uh, forty-three little lines everywhere. I can't see nothing. No, there we go. There it is. I see it. Let's just make a little. Should have brought some, uh, like a some sort of marker, like a pencil. I think I might actually have a pencil. I don't have a pencil. I have pens. Not a pencil, just a pen. Very good. All right. Well, I thought I was completely organized and prepared for this, but uh, as I said, like most of the things I make, honestly, I it's like it'll be the first time I've ever done this. And uh, how long is this going to take? Well, well, I've been blabbing and trying to cut through these things for about 11 minutes. So there's no telling how long it's going to take. Um, actually, I'll just cut that off and then I can use it as a measure. There we go. And cut through. Ugh. Come on, baby. Yeah. I need to get some decent scissors, don't I? Really? What am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so just mark mark and measure. Just use that as a guide. And then if I put a little line there, a little dash like so, which I can see. Very good. And then line her up, get my little ruler. I like the um, the markings on this uh, healing mat. This healing mat has made life really easy for getting sort of reasonably straight sort of lines on things. Which I'm quite, um, I'm quite thankful that I actually got one. Um, I was thinking, no, it's just another expense and why would I bother? But it, it has been incredibly useful. The only thing that I would say about it is this is just a little bit on the small side. Sometimes I need to be a little bit larger. Uh, okay. All right, now, I've got some cardboard or hard paper. Cardboard or hard paper would be probably suitable for what's going to happen next. And that is we've got to mark out and cut some of this stuff to uh, glue it to. Because what I don't want to do is have something that is too thin. I, I want to make something that's durable. And durability is only going to be achieved by making something that's durable. So uh, that's going to be 40 to the top section. So that's fine. Where was the pens? I know I had a pen. There we go. If I don't have a pencil, I have a pen. That's the main thing. So 40. Oh, I need to move this out of the way. I'm going to burn myself on the hot glue gun before I even get a chance to use it. So I'm measuring off 40 because I don't want it going into the gap. I just want to have it part of the door section. So mark so and do the same thing again. And mark. That should be high enough. I just need to get the width of my project. And I think uh, for this, just two of these is probably good enough. I don't think I need to go mucking around trying to go any wider. I think that will just cause me more hassles. That's good enough. What I will do is I will measure that and find out what the width is. Uh, how wide are you? You are... That is 19 millimeters, almost 2 centimeters. And for those of you working in inches, it is... Oh, my lies. That is uh, 4, 5, 6 eighths of an inch. Hook it. I'm doing 19 millimeters. I moved to metric a long time ago. Okay. There we go. And do it again. Now, why am I doing this? This is supposed to help me make it easy to stick it all together. Because I'm not going to use PVA glue. I'm going to use hot glue. Which, uh, my understanding is when um, is it DM Scotty was making doors... He did say, not a good idea because the glue goes everywhere. Well, unfortunately, I just do not have that time frame. I, I can't sort of stop my uh, project to come back later and then film things. So it's all got to happen today. And I don't want to be doing a part one 
followed by part two, part three, part four. I just want to get it done this today. So we're going to make a door and it's going to fit on that miniature base. So this is your five foot door compared to the 10 foot door that we will also make. And does it come out? Does it come out? No, no it doesn't. Come on. Yeah, there we go. All right, so with that, like two minutes just to cut out a piece of cardboard. Okay, so that is getting glued onto here with a little uh, bit sticking out of the edge. You can see that, hopefully, that it will slide into the slot that I've got on my miniature base. So let us start with a bead of glue down here. Is it going? Did I turn it on? Is it on now? No. No, it's not on. You know what it is? I haven't turned it on at all. That'll be the... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's put that aside and start working on the large one while the, the gun is firing up and getting hot. Because I turn it on the wall. Okay. Alright. So we've got the basics to that. What I want to do is I want to put two pieces. So I'm going to cut two more sticks like this right now. Just so I don't have to do them later. We'll get to all the, the major components made first off, right? So mark like so. And flip it over, put it on a straight edge, follow the line, follow the line. No, follow the line and mark on there. There it is. There we go. So handy. Yeah, okay, all right, and we get scissors out and trim it off. Don't fly around the room. Oh, that disappeared on me. Okay, come back. <laughs> okay, so we do the same thing again. Mark it off. That's good. In fact, I might make all the major components for the medium sized door first before going straight to the, um, the large one. Maybe that's a better idea. I've got eyeballs. Well, everybody has eyeballs, but I mean I have eyeballs for the mimic. Yeah, there we go. Good, marked. And trim it. So I have all of the major bits of wood. Oh, oh, it's going to get some decent scissors. This is just going to be awful in the future. Okay, cool. So that is that. I want to make a, what do you call it? A Like a little ring, like a knocker ring, if you know what I mean. So I want to grab a bit of wire and see if I can make it out of this. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, I'm going to use Millie Putt. And I figure the easiest thing I can do is just grab this and then just wind it round. Shouldn't be very hard to do, right? Because all I've got to do is just twist it around a couple of times and it should create a ring and we'll do that now so okay I've done it I've wound it round and now it's just a matter of oh, to make sure I get it off make sure that I trim it off with this thing put my pliers and make make it just a quick trim there we go and little waste bits there and then we'll do the same thing again this is going to be a bit more difficult i can see that right now see i gotta cut all the way through which i don't want to do but i want to trim it so that that isn't oh, i see i see what i gotta do there we go so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna trim it that way yeah come back so unwind just a fraction and clip it off come on you come on clip does it clip off what would be really handy is to have pre-made little plastic bits that you can use but of course wherever you are in the world you may not necessarily have access to that so I think it's probably safer just to make your own stuff right yeah there we go the ring isn't um, super fantastic, but if I can just keep 
trimming little bits off it it won't be too bad okay well I have a little ring that didn't work too badly I mean it's it's quite large but do I have a requirement for a size on the, the knocker ring on my door not so much an issue I don't think that's going to be hugely problematic um, in fact I can probably separate that just a fraction just to make sure it looks like it's joined only at one bit yeah I'm getting I'm getting fussy now let's not worry about that okay so I got that I've got my eyeballs I gotta cut some teeth so we're gonna cut some teeth right now that's what the toothpicks are for incredibly useful and well, how many teeth do we want I don't know one two three four so I feel like four teeth is a lot of teeth on a door that size uh, six to eight teeth six to eight teeth so I need four of them yeah that'll do grab that get this out of the way that gun heating up yeah it's starting to heat up now good all right and we'll just cut these off and I feel like the size of them I remember last time I almost created a whole lot of things for stabbing into myself so I'm going to trim off the ends of the toothpicks first and this will just make them less sharp there we go trim that off put that over there this is just to avoid you stabbing somebody with it and hurting yourself they they're they're not pointy teeth they didn't get their teeth sharpened at the um, dentist instead what they've gone and done is they've got them ground down just to make them look uh, you know last longer maybe they had some caps put on how much would it cost to get a, um, a cap put on a um, a door mimic I've got no idea all right cool just trim 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 just like so and let's cut these off now it's the length that is going to be the issue so the mouth I feel like needs to be quite large but not too large so we're going to cut them about there I can trim them down smaller if I need need be that's that one and how long is that that is roughly about as long as two of those things so I just need to just put it against my little squares and mark it Oop, come back here so two squares on my head that's probably about there get rid of this keep going so we've got all the major components for it. oh man some thick toothpicks here we go so I don't know what everybody else is doing is anybody else making a project of their own just cutting off the little bits that we'll need and we can hot glue gun those things into the uh, the door once it's assembled Oh yeah, that was nice and easy. I wish all the rest were. Okay, cool. Drink of water. Okay, so we need some eyeballs. Let's select something that's suitable for my little container of eyeballs. I feel like the smaller ones are the best idea for this particular door. So let's grab all the smaller ones. I really like the idea of three eyeballs. So let's do three. And you could have multiple eyeballs on this thing. Doesn't need to be just three, could or two, or I suppose it could even be one. You could have one eyeball. All right. So I've got these bits. I just need to glue them onto the piece of cardboard, and hopefully, if I get rid of all the other tools that are in the way, I will be able to do so. Let's just shuffle things around a little bit. Make sure that doesn't get in the way. Move the pen. Otherwise, I'll melt it. Okay. So hot glue. Here we go. Now I'm not going too close to the edge because I know this will hold it in place and I just don't want it all squeezing out to the sides too much if I can help it. And then just place it like so. And that's fixed in place. That was really quick. 
That was super fast. Super duper fast. And that just needs to be glued in place there. And I've got that done. So I'm not always slow. Sometimes I'm slow. I think the, the majority of this is um, sort of sorted out. Sort of sorted out? Mostly sorted out. Probably sorted out. Okay. And we'll hold that in place. Now for those of you who want to have like a wood effect, that is what those uh, Citadel tools are all about. These things, you grab something that's got uh, an edge on it that you can run along there and create some texture. Or grab yourself a screwdriver and away you go. You will have no problem sorting that out, I'm sure. Okay, so this is supposed to slide into here. And that is supposed to sit... Oh, that's what the problem is. I made them too long. The idea was that would sit in there, and this, okay. All right, so is the trim job required? Let's make, make sure I get my, uh, my dual bits lined up. Okay, so the the other, the second two bits of um, popsicle stick need to be cut to four, 40 millimeters. They need to be shorter, not as long. Oh my gosh. What would I do without this mat here? It's been pretty quiet in the chat. There's plenty of people watching. Watching TV, listening to music. For those of you who are wondering why I do not have um, music playing while I'm doing this, it's because it would have to be royalty free and I'm not going to subject you to that. Or myself, I don't really, I'm not really going to get upset. Besides, I'm talking enough for everybody, and I've got the cicadas in the background, you can hear them going chirp, 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 and bananas. That's my music for today. Alright, let's just trim them. Oh, okay, that was reasonably successful. So we've essentially got to make a door before we can make anything else. That's that's what's going on right now for those of you who are wondering what's what the heck is up. We're creating a door and then we turn it into a mimic. Alright. That. Look. That looks gonna that's gonna look great. Okay. So let's pop this thing out. I feel like I should glue this on now. But that glue might also get in the way. Mm. Choices, choices. All right, let's just glue these sticks on first. Like so. A little bit of glue. The Chili Maker 101. Hi, how's it going? I didn't really get a chance to talk to you last time. Um, I was on my way out as you were coming in. So how has your games been going? I hear you, um, you were telling me you're a dungeon master, which I'm glad to hear. There's always space for more Dungeon Masters. We need more and more of them. It's just the only way that uh, Dungeons & Dragons be can become the most uh, popular game in the world. Uh -huh. Did that work? I think mostly it did. Alright, let's do that again. Um, I, okay. The Chili Make 101, I just finished a campaign actually. Oh, what's the uh, campaign? Your own, own creation or... A uh, pre-made adventure of some kind. Woo. There we go. Fantastic. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh, what's that? Um, uh, Lila Z. Just call me Lila. Lila. It's easier. I'd type more, I, I, I'd type more, but both thumbs are in a brace. Oh my gosh. Also, I just uh, finished running a D&D session. Well, fair enough. I understand. Lel. Lel. I got it. Lel it is. I'm awful with names. It takes me ages to get them sorted out. And you can just imagine if I'm a dungeon master running games, playing Dungeons & Dragons, my players just relish making names that I cannot pronounce. And they just laugh their heads off. I don't know if you guys um, have to deal with that yourselves, but I get it all the time. Okay. That 
is mostly stuck in place. I feel like I could do more to uh, secure it, but right now I'm not. It's, uh, it's good enough. All right, so now that I've done that, I feel like I may have done something a bit too rash. Have I done something rash too soon? Um, the Chili Maker 101, I had my friends fight a lich. Oh, well, why not? Well, I would. My friends fought a lich. And, uh, yeah, they had a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Okay, so this. So when I was saying you could put texture into this, probably do this before you glue it onto the base like I just done, okay? So you just run a hard metal tool across it and create lines. And of course, they won't be exactly perfect. And uh, the wider the surface that you're using, the bigger the indentation is going to be. Does that make sense? So you can just run it across like so. You can use a screwdriver, you do not need to use sculpting tools for this. Just mark it a couple of times just to give it a bit of texture just along the edge. And you're trying to get sort of long lines so it looks like it's more wood. And I'm going to use the other end as well because I like the sharp end. And that will certainly give it a bit of texture. It looks kind of woodish now, I guess. Flip it over, do the same thing. As I said, do this while it's not glued to the base like the moron that I am. That's what I did. Of course, of course I, should. I knew I knew I had to. That's why I had the tool ready to go. I got too excited and just went straight for the base, didn't I? So what I'm doing is I'm using the rounded edge first to sort of move the wood around. And then I'm using the pointier end to get... Uh, more obvious lines in it. And that, you know, truthfully this bit is the, uh, this is more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, what's that, uh, the Chili Maker 101, I was never the best with uh, crafting doors. Well, as you can see, I am, this is, I made doorways. I've made doors before, but I wouldn't say I've ever made what I'm making now. It'll be my first time. I wouldn't say I'm a great uh, crafter by any means. I just do stuff. Okay, so that has got that sorted. I need to glue on my ring. I've got a ring here that's going to sort of act as the, the door knobby bit. But my problem is, I feel like there needs to be something else. What I was thinking I would do is I cut a bit of cardboard and stick it on behind there. I don't need to use wood, but a little bit of cardboard cut out as a square strikes me as just perfect for what we want. And if I just take that ring, so you can see roughly what I'm doing, I want to make that triangle, which well actually a square that will act as a triangle. Did I give it away? Might have. So that's about as big as it needs to be. You can see how exact this is. All right. So I don't think that's, uh, yep, I'll just use my cutting knife and just cut a basic square. Super complicated, like nobody could ever do this. You guys will have no problems making one of these things. Because I'll be making all mistakes. <sighs> Cypher uh, Strife. Uh, watching someone make a uh, paint a minute a mini is one thing, but uh, creating one from scratch is a whole other level. Yeah, tr trust me. Yeah, I've done a few of these now, and it is. It's a whole other level for me. For me. This one is the most, uh, as I said, scariest one I've ever tried to do. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it slightly on an angle. It's not quite square, so I'll square it up a bit more. And it'll sort of be like a, uh, sort of be triangle, well not triangle, more like a diamond shaped. That's what I'm aiming for. I want to glue this on and have it be diamond shaped. 
I also want to have space for the eyes and the mouth. So I'm going to go slightly higher than above the center because I feel like that's where people would be tending to grab. Think in terms of the door, your own door, look at your door right now. That's usually where the handle is, it's slightly above center. So uh, let's put a blob of glue right about there. And come on you, get on there fast. And then squish it down. And yes, I know there's glue squeezing out the side, but it's gonna dry. And then all I do is I get my craft knife and I cut it away and it's done. Piece of cake. Uh, the Chili Maker 101. Um, I like you. I like. I like your How to Play series. Oh, good. Are you talking about the Wizard How to Play series? Are you talking about the Warlock How to Play series? The Sorcerer How to Play series? Or are you talking about maybe the Rogue? I started doing the Rogue. Or are you talking about the general rules? Which ones? It's always good to know if you guys tell me the stuff that you like the most usually I can kind of tell by watch time and uh, views but it's not always a great all of them are good okay all right well I'm doing the right thing then so let's cut off this bit of glue because we don't want it there yeah see how simple that was that wasn't very hard at all piece of cake yes I might have cut into it a little bit might have might have might have cut into it a little bit it's all right don't freak out and yeah cool all right let's glue this ring on like so and it's i realize that the ring is not perfectly f perfect so if if you guys aren't happy with that you you're welcome to do it differently so we've got a blob of glue there and then without burning myself i'm gonna just plonk it on I think I'll put the I think I'll put the ring slightly lower from the center does it look all right I don't know all right I'm not gonna worry about it let's put some eyeballs on this thing so I'm gonna glue some eyeballs oh we should have just any old place let's get totally random let's get crazy crazy man um, I feel like um, I want to put banding on it too that's what I should do, is I'll put banding on it. What did I have that I could use for banding? Aha! Cardboard. Yet again, very useful. Let's just cut some cardboard strips. Uh, I'm going to grab a ruler. Just shuffle that out of the way. I was, just, I was just looking at one of those miniatures and thinking, yeah, it's got banding on it. Not all of them do. But, um, the Chili Maker 101, do you stream every day? Pretty much every day, man. Pretty much. Almost every single day. Uh, sometimes I can't because I usually try to take one day off where I do not stream and, and sort of go out with my partner uh, or my family. But um, yesterday was an exception because she had other things to do. So I sort of I made the I made uh, the decision to stream that day rather than do uh, something else because I could get away with it pretty much. Um, I will have to change the way I do things. I'm, I'm probably going to have a job shortly, which means I will stream every day, but they won't be these long, drawn-out sort of, you know, things where they take uh, an hour or half an hour or anything like that. They'll probably be a lot faster. Uh, what's that? Um, Cypher, oh, Cypher Strife. What do you got here? This, oh, his name is appropriate. How to d and yeah, look, this is what we do as DMs. We just put stuff together, we just make stuff, and uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Yep, banding looks nice on it. Let's do that. I just need to, I feel like I'm just going to glue it in place and then trim it on off after. Just glue it in place. Just a little bit of glue. A little bit of, yeah, now, now there's nothing coming out. Come here. Here we go. Good. Stick it in place. Did I glue far enough along? No, I didn't. Great. All right, we're just going to bend it over.
You wouldn't see DM Scotty doing this sort of thing. It'll be all perfect. Alright. Let's just hold that down in place. That it's set. Maybe we won't get to the large. I really prefer making stuff that's large. Uh, the Chili Maker 101. Do you watch the DM's Craft? I absolutely do watch the DM's Craft. Um, and, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't. It's a... Uh, <laughs> it's the standard for crafting on YouTube. He is he's the one who really got things going for Dungeons and Dragons and and just general crafting uh, when it came to terrain. So I, I feel like he's the channel to watch. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again down the bottom, and you can put banding on both sides of this thing. Just a little bit of cardboard looks like banding. I'm going to trim off. I think I might be holding it in the wrong place because it's getting hot. Okay. There we go. Squeeze that down. Hold it down in place. Oh, did it just move from its base? Oh, it didn't stick in place like I'd hoped it would. Okay, well, let's fix that. I think we need to fix that because I need this not to be moving around while I'm doing all this. Um, actually, I'll fix that in a second. There we go. That just made life easier, didn't it? Don't, don't consider it a step backwards. Consider it a step forwards that required you to step backwards just for a fraction of time. Okay. Cool. And this glue that's sitting here, I can just... Cut through there and scrape away. And obviously doing this with something like PVA glue would be more sensible because you're going to have less of this spillage coming on. But we're trying to make this in about an hour, hour and a half and get it done. Oh, there we go. It's another one. Cool. I feel like that. Do I need to worry about it? This is the problem when I'm doing stuff. I always get kind of fussy about stuff. Uh, what's that? The chili maker. What do you got here? I started crafting, crafting thing. Okay, I started crafting things because buying things cost so much. Much. Yeah, much. Yeah, I know what you mean. Which is why I do these. I do this because. You guys are having to spend more and more money to buy stuff that you didn't have to spend quite so much money on. Now it's just getting just ridiculous. Everything is way more expensive that you can then it's it's just out of the the realm of expense. And if you're not in the right place in the world, you just can't buy stuff. It just isn't possible. And um, I know a few people when I do the uh, where to buy cheap D and D miniatures videos get quite upset because they go to look at it and they're maybe in the um, United States they're fine but if they're anywhere else like I don't know um, Colombia or um, the UK and it's in pounds and it's just super expensive and they just can't afford it so this is why we do this we do these videos so that you guys can just make your own stuff and, uh, you know, chances are it might actually wind up being um, better. You know, a little bit of practice and you'll get the sort of stuff you want rather than having to roam through a dozens and dozens of booster boxes trying to find the right one. Or trying to buy them as singles online and paying exorbitant prices. Which I find has always been the case for me. If anybody tries to sell anything as a single uh, in New Zealand, it's always way more expensive than I wanted it to be. So that isn't cool. I don't like that. And not that I am suggesting anything about uh, that, you know, you shouldn't be supporting your local stores. I support my local store all the time by running games. But um, that doesn't mean I'm going to pay whatever they charge 
after it's been freighted to New Zealand and I've had to wait three to six months to get at it. Okay, so we're going to put some banding on the back of this. And this will be the back of the door. And the theory is I'll put it in the right place and it won't look like it's out of position. Oh, come on. Okay, so that's, that's that. I just need to plonk it down in roughly the right place and then hold it down and it'll be set in a second. We'll come back and we'll trim that in, in just a moment. Yep, piece of cake, that was easy. <laughs> uh, dear. Dear Luke, hello, welcome. I'm, I've noticed it's starting to get a bit busy in here. Just, I can just imagine when I start trying to do the uh, treasure chest mimic as a live stream. I think that'll be quite popular. Oh, if my head's in the way, I do apologise. I do that sometimes. I uh, just need to press that down, make sure that it's lined up, and yeah, I think I got it. Man, I just want to get these eyeballs on. Get the eyeballs on, make the mouth, give it some teeth. Ooh, that's a bit of cardboard that's disappeared behind my desk. <laughs> okay, all right. If I just sound like I'm a rambling crazy person, it's probably because I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about making this. As I've already said before. Normally most of the stuff that I've made has been quite large and this is kind of fiddly. I don't like fiddly stuff. I like it when it's nice and large and I can get it easily. Okay, let's just clean that glue away as well. Yep. Got it off. Now, for those of you who are concerned about the edge, it is up to you how you deal with that. You could just get a bit of glue and just run along there and then along the top to clean it up to get rid of that sort of effect. But I don't think it's a real big issue, personally. I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so that's our basic door. Let's put some eyeballs on this. We were trying to glue eyeballs on before. Um, Okay, let this, uh, let's get some eyeballs. So where is this thing? This thing had eyeballs sort of there and there, and I feel like I want to put the mouth here and the eyes over here. So it's not going to be exactly like that picture. Um, I'm going to put a little blob of glue there. Stick my eyeball there. I want to build up some stuff around it too. Now you could do that with hot glue. No reason why you couldn't. Or you could use milli putt if you wanted to as well. What is put an eyeball? Where do we put an eyeball? I don't know. Give me some ideas, guys. Uh, slightly down. And quick as a wick. Squeeze it in. Yep. Okay. And another one. One more. Up there, down there. Ah! Choices, choices. It's really hard. Oh, sorry, what was that? I, I kind of lost track. You're getting close to 4,000. Oh, yeah, I am. Apparently it's um, it's getting getting closer. I, I think that was uh, because Dave decided to do some recommendations. I, mean, I have been growing slowly, but I think um, it did help that um, Dave at um, uh, Draven Swiftbow did a recommendation on my channel, which I think has helped quite a lot. And actually, uh, Drell Bard. Drell Bard also did one a little while ago, which was really nice. Okay, so I've done this. Now I want to put in some teeth, and I feel like, I feel like these teeth are way bigger than my little itty bitty door. It just feels like it, they're just massive in comparison. Just massive. So, change of plans. We're going to trim these little bits of wood down and make them a lot smaller. 
fact, I'm going to go to about there. All right. And yes, teeth are going to be much smaller. Yeah, I suppose I could, but I feel like I need to have space for the mouth as well. This door is just so small. Because the door is so small, it just doesn't give you enough space to put everything. It's all very well on the miniature. It looks like, oh, that was easy, but it, you know, the picture's big, but the actual miniature would be quite small. Ah, there we go. There we go, another one. I think what I will do is I'm going to mix up a bit of putty. That's the uh, the Millie putt. And use that to build sort of like lips for it. So that I've got something to sort of jam things into. Or jam over. Is it jam over? Jam things into? Does that make sense? Not really? Okay. Alright. There we go. Good. Getting there. Okay. Whew. Much harder than I thought it would be. Um, okay, so I've got three. I've got six. I don't need any more. I think I might have had eight, but I think that was getting just a little bit crazy. Um, one, two, three. Nah, I'll do eight. Let's just glue them all on. Bugger. Okay. Okay, so the plan has got to be... If I put the putty on now, I'm, I can't do anything more with it. So I've got to do that last. So the trick is going to be to decide on the basic location for the mouth, and then to put the teeth in. Glue the teeth in, and then put the putty over the top. I think that's the best way. So let's have a look. Uh, let's go wide. I feel like wide is good. Wide is good. Let's go with way up here. It doesn't need to be exact in terms of its shape. In fact, the pen mark won't even be seen later on. Uh, okay. So that's giving me a rough idea of where I've got to glue my bits of stick. I'm going to put it over the banding. Why not? Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, do I need to worry about that? No. Let's just do it. Don't think. Just do Yep. Glue that in place like so. Let's do it again. Close together. Yep. That's not too bad. It's working out. It's working out. Um, yes, I am mainly the DM as it happens, the chili maker. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I do get a chance to play occasionally, but often it's more DMing, um, which is why I made this channel, so that uh, it was it wasn't so much about giving DM advice; it was actually about showing people how to play the game, because I spent a lot of time uh, showing new players how to play Dungeons and Dragons and covering, you know, all that sort of stuff, which of course I still needed to figure out myself. But that's what this whole channel was sort of built around, was just um, me showing people how to play Dungeons and Dragons 5e. There we go. Some teeth. Roughly sort of in the... Ugh! Flies attacking me. Okay. I feel like I can stick more teeth in there. Now that I've done this, I feel like I could definitely put more in. Yeah, well, I don't think you necessarily need to have putty. I think you could probably get away with just using something like uh, hot glue. Just go over the top hot glue. Heck, heck well, maybe we'll do that myself. Maybe we'll just do all of it with just hot glue. Right, teeth there. I feel like there needs to be another tooth there, but it's just, those are too big. All right, let's do uh, the bottom row and then fill in the sides. Okay. Super fiddly. Absolutely the fiddliest thing I've ever done. 
remind me never to do this again. Oh, that's right, I've got to make another mimic too, out of a chest, treasure chest. Forgot about that. So, so much for that. Ah, I burnt myself. Okay. Little stringy bits everywhere. Come here, come here, come here, come here, go away. Uh, make sure. I wish how I had like two, two sets of hands. Two sets of hands would be really good right now. I don't have two sets of hands though. Okay, so if they're a little bit sort of wonky in terms of their positioning, that doesn't matter. I think that's actually probably a good thing. Uh, now, you wish you had putty to do this. Well, you know, you could just find small beads. You know, just have a look at one of your craft shops, find some small beads to use as the eyeballs. I just didn't have any beads that were small enough. Hence why I didn't do that. Um, but you could do exactly that. It would not be a problem. Okay. Alright. Alright. So um, I feel like I could probably get two more little itty bitty ones in there. So either I am um, really clever or I'm pushing my luck. So we're going to do it anyway. Because as I said... We're on, we're on How to D&D, where Fred does anything, no matter how silly and full of shit might be. <laughs> okay. Alright, so trim off the ends so they're not too super, super sharp. Although those are kind of perfect. They're really small. Like, so small. Will I be able to put them on without sticking to the glue? That might actually not be possible. It might, in fact, be impossible to do so. Yeah, I do apologise for lag. Yeah, I'm experiencing lag at my end, so there must be something going on. It's oh, that's the school. School kids are back home, so they'll be on the playstations and so forth, playing games. That's probably probably what's going on. I'm in little old New Zealand, and uh, well, I'm in Helensville. Helensville is a tiny place, and as a result of that. There won't be an awful lot of, um, come here, there, got the tooth in, it almost got away on me though. Hopefully the lag doesn't continue on. I do understand that in about, supposed to be, they've told us that in about four months I'm going to get fibre, which means that all of my live stream content will be significantly improved. Wouldn't that be awesome? I think it would be. Uh, just got to push that into the right place before the glue sets. Okay. Alright. So, I've got my teeth. I don't think I'm going to stick any more teeth in there. I actually feel like if I put any more teeth in there, it's going to be a problem. Okay. So, now it is about trying to make sure we can get sort of like some lips over it. So, now you could just try to run glue around here. It would be kind of tricky. I'm not going to do that. I am actually going to mix up some putty. So this is milli putt. That's two parts. So you mix, mix it together in two parts to get what you want out of it. And we'll just take it out of the packet. Like so. Uh, I am going to get fibre, but in about four months. It will be awesome. Particularly since I do a lot of live stream and, and it would make you guys... Uh, it, it must be really hard, you know, trying to live stream when you don't have a really good internet connection is, is going to be a bit of a trick. Um, but yeah, that's all going to going to come right eventually, so that's good news. Let's just push that out of the way. Ooh, that doesn't look like good. That looks bad. Did I just drop off completely? What is going on here? Just let me just check everything. I don't understand why it is... Okay, it's... Video output is extremely low. Okay. Alright. Hopefully it'll improve. I'm going to mix this up while you guys are um, contending with the technical issues of live streaming. 
this is always one of the issues with live streaming, right? If you don't have a really good internet, it just doesn't give you the same results. But uh, three or four months and it should all be fine. La da 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 di, da 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 di, ya da di. Okay, squishing up my putty, and it's pretty close to being done. Okay, good. So now we're going to roll that into a, a sausage. and create two sausages, one for the top, one for the bottom, to create the mouth, lips. Is it long enough? Not quite. A little bit longer. Mm, a little bit longer. There we go. All right, that's that. Let's do that again. You guys are uh, either lagging super, super. It must be, must be just unwatchable at this point. There we go. Cool. Got it. Okay, all right, just need to pat that down, I want to grab my tool just to clean it up, and all we're going to do is just land this into the door a little bit more, so that the mouth is part of the door rather than looking like I just stuck a sausage bit onto it. Just like so. Not too difficult. And I can go back over it later and give it any kind of um, details that I want. But let's just get it attached first. We're not going to be giving it um, nice looking lips too. It's not going to have big juju lips like this. Well, there's nothing wrong with you doing that. You could do that if you wanted to. Okay. I feel like that is mostly sorted. And it's just going to be about... Roughing it up a bit. Just around there, just to give it a bit of texture so it's not quite so um, pretty. Working out all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's um. It certainly has improved a lot. Like that, it's made a big difference. I just need to sort out the eye, the eye section. I don't feel like I like the eyes the way they are. There definitely needs to be something done to deal with that. I'm going to do something with it very shortly. But now that we've um, blended that in just mostly and create some indentations and rough up the around the mouth. Now you could try to put a tongue on this, but um, 
I'm, I'm feeling like a tongue is just just too much trouble so I'm not going to bother doing that instead I'm going to just go with trying to keep it as simple as I can what I do want to do is I want to deal with the eyes because the eyes don't look right I feel like I need to either I've got to put some hot glue around there or I've got to use some putty to just tidy it up so drink of water mix up some more putty and we'll do that in a second uh, right where is it Probably good enough. Do that. Any more than that won't be really necessary, I think. So when I'm mixing my putty, normally what I try to do is I try to uh, create a couple of balls, mix that up, and then I attach it. Now I've created a lot more than I probably need, and that is just so that I can get the eyes right. Because this putty is really hard to work with when there's only a small amount of it being used. Okay. Alright, there we go. I'm ready. Let us squish this together. We'll glue that in place shortly. But this is this is essentially the door. And I will glue that down and in place pretty shortly. It won't, it won't be too much longer before I get that done. Oh, Come on. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it faster, squeeze it faster, yeah. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, fast, squeeze it, squeeze, squeeze, come on, faster, faster. You know, one of the things about these projects is every time I do something and I think, oh, I can get this done in a certain frame, frame of time, it just doesn't work out. So we are, we will finish this one, but I'll never, I'm not going to get to the uh, the large size uh, based um, door. I feel like that needs to be another day. It's just going to be too hard to try and get it done in one, in one string. Uh, particularly since uh, we're all way, already into what an hour to just do this one I think it's asking way too much so so I'm going to need to use very small amounts of putty to get around the eyeballs and so I'm going to roll it up into really small bits of um, well sausages basically we're sausage making Just enough that I can create like a donut around it and then use the tool, my uh, my uh, putty tool to actually blend it in. Okay, that is good enough. This is the fiddly bit. It's trying to get around the eye like so. Oh, oh this is going to be a lot of fun. I can see it now. Yeah, this is working well. Try that again. No, I'm not a master crafter. Yes, I think it's wise to do just this one today, yes. Yeah, considering how long it's taken me to get this far. I apologise if my fingers are in the way because I'm really struggling to get this to stick on. It is not sticking on. It is not sticking on. That is just not going to work. So, new plan. I have some putty, which is going to go hard on me. Which I'm not really happy about. So, I am... I know I said I wouldn't make a tongue. <laughs> but I think I am making a tongue now. Nah, looks awful. Looks awful. But I will make lots more of those little eyeballs because those were really, really handy for uh, this build. And um, so what are we going to do about around the eyeballs? The answer is, 
I'm going to use my hot glue gun. <laughs> I'm just going to use a hot glue gun and just blend it in and hopefully don't spill too much um, glue in the wrong place and feed it around and use my tool. That's it. I don't think there's anything else. There's no other solution. It's just because the thing is just so small. If it had been a larger size door, it would have been easy peasies. Well, well, it would have been easier. I don't know about easy peasies, but it would have been easier. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I, I feel like this might wind up being the very first build that I've done that's not quite the way I'd expected it would come out. There's always got to be one, right? Okay. That doesn't look too bad. Let's just keep doing that. That's not bad either. I'll just let that dry because um, apparently that seems to be kind of working. It looks like the eyeballs are sort of uh, part of the door now with the glue there. And of course I could try to sort of blend my glue down but I'm not going to worry about that. I think that's just asking for more trouble than it's worth. I'll just let gravity do its job and, uh, and it will sort of... Uh, seep out a little bit we'll just wait for this one to dry once this is dry here then i'll do the last eyeball and um yeah then i just glue it to the stand and what do you know we got it well i could do the outside too put some glue around the outside just to tidy it up okay is she dry yet mostly mostly let's have a quick look my really super duper vision <laughs> uh, it's good enough all right let's do the last eyeball uh, okay uh, what's that um, the chili maker how many people do you usually DM for it can be anything from uh, 14 to 3 uh, just depends uh, BB's for, for, oh, Roll for Damage! For those of you who don't know about Roll for Damage, Roll for Damage got his own channel, does terrain, uh, does, he's made a couple of miniatures as well. So, highly recommend going and checking out his channel sometime. Obviously not right now while I'm doing mine, but later on. Okay. Let's just let that set. And I'm just blowing on it and catch up with the, uh, the chat. Um, Lel. All right, buds, I've got to head to sleep. Yeah, you go to sleep. I'll catch you in another stream. Fair enough. I'll see you later. Uh, Cypher Strife. I almost, it almost looks like a Necronomicon. <laughs> well, I suppose it kind of does, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to take that as a compliment because that means it's, uh, it's scary. Okay. Because the um, Nomicon, the... That, that, that book is supposed to be like scary, right? And we, what, we, what we want is we want a mimic that is scary. And if that is what's happened, that is good. Okay. Most of that seems to have worked out. It's very, very hard to get it to come out exactly the way you want. Uh, just because of the size of it. feel like it won't be too much of an issue though all right so let's um let's deal with the side let's put a bead of glue around the the sides and then glue this back onto the stand and then we're home and hose so bead of glue along here is the side of the gun to just blend it in and then grab it again there's much to grab onto, not really, but uh, we'll try. Oh. Now you, you can tell I'm all twisted up.
Okay, that's not too bad. I'm going to just let that dry. I'm going to hold it in this weird, weird position because uh, I like doing that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, the Chili Maker. How old were you when you started playing D&D? Well, actually, I was probably 15 when I started playing HeroQuest, but I didn't start playing Dungeons & Dragons till much later. Honestly, I didn't think much of Dungeons & Dragons when I was at school. I remember the kids talking about it. Weird game with weird dice, didn't know want to know about it. It was only later on. I was probably in my uh, late teenage years, 18, 19, maybe 20-ish, when I started picking up the books, and then I didn't start playing till much later on. Um, in fact, it would have been even like years before I started picking it up. But I did a lot of LARP before that. But I was in my 20s when I was doing that as well. Okay, let's uh, run that glue along the side. Okay. I feel like that isn't too bad isn't too bad let it dry just wait for it to dry and then um, I'm gonna stick it onto the base and we are gonna say it's done um, and I'll come back and I'll try doing the larger size door which I think will be honestly significantly easier than this little itty bitty medium sized door because I can tell you now I found it really really hard something this size is just so small so small this would have been much easier Getting a mouth on, on something that's like standing for him to get through. Oh, yes. That's more like it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, okay. So that is dry. The door and the eyes, the mouth, the teeth, the knocker is in place. I've done some texture. It's got some banding on it. It's time to glue it onto this thing. And I'm going to glue it around the other way because then it'll have more to actually set into. I think that's the best way. Let's do that. Now I tried doing this before and it was not incredibly successful so I'm probably going to um, reinforce it a couple of times and then I'll just hold it down in place and let it set. Make sure the door is standing upright. Like so. Looks weird. Really does. This is definitely the strangest thing I've ever made. Uh, the tree maker. Okay, okay, well, I gotta go. Bye. Alright, fair enough. I'll see you later. We'll just secure the back of this. So I'm gonna run a little bit of glue around the back make sure this is hard now yes it is just to make sure it stays in place and I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that um, the base is sort of in fact I can just create texture there anyway and nobody will know just chuck a bit of glue on there all right cool and then the front do I need to worry about the front? I feel like it's pretty strong. I feel like it is pretty strong. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put a... There's a little bit of space underneath the miniature itself, the miniature base, and I can apply glue there as well. But I'm going to just wait until this is set. Um, I've glued the back, and I'll let that set, and then that will be fine. Uh, is it dry yet? No, not yet. Just give it a little longer. Okay. Right. So you can see that little space underneath. I'm just going to run a bead of glue along there and then use my, my uh, tool to clean it up. Right, so. And then use this and then scrape off. And then just lay it there for a second while it's drying. And that 
is going to be a uh, completed door mimic in a second once we wait for the glue to set and uh, yeah wow well it was it was a bit it was a bit of a mission it was certainly a lot harder than I thought it would be I honestly thought I'd, I'd be able to get two done in the same time frame I was probably getting a little bit carried away because I managed to get four black puddings made uh, in the last um, crafting video and um, yeah I'll still come back and we'll still do some larger mimic doors. I think that's a good idea. But I, uh, I, I don't think that will be happening today. I think that's not gonna, not gonna work. That's dry. That's good enough. So that, that is it. This is the door mimic for those of you who were wanting to have one. Um, really simple. I just made a door, put a knocker on it, glued a couple of eyeballs put some glue around them just to sort of make it look like it was part of the door mostly mostly and um, cut off some uh, toothpicks glued them in place I put banding on it as well the doors got banding on it as well and uh, once I did that I just got some putty and created like a, a lip area you could use just if you got it with a, a hot glue gun you could do exactly that with a hot glue gun and you've got yourself a door mimic and um, it's a pretty weird looking creature You've got multiple eyes and you can you can glue more than one eye or two eyes or three eyes you can put four eyes on this as long as you've got the space if you've got the space then great roll for damage looks great man hey thank you very much I take that as a compliment you would know I've seen your videos you're very good at what you do I always feel that my stuff is more amateuristic um, but uh, yeah um, obviously all of my stuff is <laughs> I just don't plan anything out I just grab the materials, have a rough idea, and then just go for it. So look, if you found this video helpful or informative, please like the video. Share the video with somebody else who wants to make themselves a door mimic, and they can't afford to buy it themselves. Because either they're in the wrong country, or they just don't sell them. Apparently they're uh, limited in, in sort of stock anyway, buying them from wherever the heck it is. Uh, I'm not even going to give you the link, because you won't even be able to buy them. There's I've like one or two left. Uh, if you... <laughs> If you're not already subscribed, then hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel because I do more of this. Don't worry, it's, there is more coming. It might not be every single day, but certainly it will come throughout the week. And hit the bell button beside the subscribe button on my channel to get notified when I go live. So you can watch me live, chat along with me, do your own painting, do whatever it is that you do. And uh, yeah, it'll let you know when I publish a new video, which is always helpful. I, I thought it was anyway. On top of that, if you want to support my channel, watch more of my videos. Always helpful, gets a bit of ad revenue, can pay for all the materials that I'm using here, which is helpful, and buy better gear, and just sort of uh, stop people from giving me a hard time thinking that I'm what I'm doing is not worth it. Um, so that's always good. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description you'll find all of the materials and tools that I use, and if you don't, I will make sure I update it very shortly. But you will find all of the materials and tools that I used for this build down in the description. And you'll also find affiliate links. If you click on that link, buy something, I get a small commission and you pay exactly the same price. That's if you buy things online, that is. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Wherever my 20 dice is. There it is. There's my 20 dice. See you later. You guys have a good day.